Apart from the possibility to drag and drop in the timeline, we also have the possibility to do so from the preview window. I'll demonstrate this in the following example. I'd like to place this clip in the timeline, but first I will place it in the preview window via drag and drop. This is now the preview of the clip we want to insert. And now I also have the possibility to create an in and out point for the clip. This means I can specify that I want the clip to start with this frame. I'll rearrange my workspace a little so we can see the buttons for in and out. So I specify my in point here, which I could also do via the I key. Go a little further in the clip and set my out point, key O. And now I can drag the region in between the in and out points and drop it into our timeline. So click in the preview with the left mouse button held and position this section that we specified at the right place in the timeline. Of course this also takes account of the specified mode and as we are in insert mode any clips will be moved along to make space for our new clip. So in summing up we can say that we can insert clips into the timeline using drag and drop from either the bin or from the preview after having placed a clip in the preview window by dragging it from the bin first. The last method has the advantage that we can set an in and out point before the clip is placed in the timeline. I have now placed a different clip in the preview window and as we can see it has various scenes within the clip. When I move the position pointer through the clip we can see where these scenes start and stop and I would like to separate them with in and out points. And in so doing I notice that it's not that easy with the mouse as each movement of the mouse is quite a large jump in time. So if I wish to find the first frame of a scene such as this ship scene for example I have to go about it in a slightly different manner. And to do so there are various possibilities. One possibility is to use a mouse wheel to move frame by frame. Move the wheel one click up and you move backwards in time by a frame. And move the wheel down and you move forwards in time. As you can see this can be rather tedious so I'll move with the mouse a bit forwards and we can see that each movement of the mouse means a jump of one second through the video. And then I can use the mouse wheel. I arrive at 28, 22 which is the first frame of our scene. I can also use the arrow keys on my keyboard to perform the same function as the mouse wheel. The left arrow moves back a frame and the right arrow moves forward a frame. If I hold the shift key then we jump forwards or backwards in larger steps. Using this method you can move quickly to a position with the shift key held and then locate frame by frame with the shift key not held down. Here I will set the in position by using the I key and then I'll jump further using the shift and right key function. And here the scene is finished and I can use the arrow key to find the last frame I want to use. And then press the O key to set the out point. And then I can place this scene in the correct position via drag and drop. There is another possibility to make the separating of scenes within a longer clip easier and I'd like to show you that now. To help me I'll choose a different scene that needs separating from the clip and I'll choose the scene with the sunset. If I try and do this with the mouse it really isn't going to work as the scene is too short and the mouse has too large a resolution to locate to the exact position. What I can do is to roughly edit the in and out points using key commands I and O. And so my clip is limited to within these two points. 
And then by clicking this button here, the region between the in and out points is zoomed into. And now we can see that the resolution is much finer when I move the mouse within the region. And I can find the exact locations much easier. Of course, I can also use the mouse wheel or arrow keys to find these positions. And once again, by using the I and O keys, I can specify the region's start and end points. In so doing, we have the scene we need. So, we can see that it can be useful to roughly specify a region and then using the in and out points to zoom in before specifying the exact region required.